All right, my friends. You guys are listening to LZ7. Woo! All the way from England. All That's a country That's in a Europe. Country. <laughs> <laughs> I love you after explaining that. That's so good. Yeah. It's where the queen lives. The queen lives there. The queen, right? Didn't you just yeah. lost the... Uh, the yeah. husband yeah, is it sad, sad? is yeah, it sad for many sad. people oh man yeah the whole the whole country's in two weeks of mourning now wow well my so condolences yeah 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 it's hard it's just you know she she fully loved jesus and he loved jesus and you know they're going to meet again but it's still difficult you know 99 he was and she's 95 wow so you're just wow they were together 73 years that's longevity right there <laughs> madness i think it's amazing <laughs> Wow, that's so cool. Hey man, let me try to. Oh, there you go. I I was changed. You didn't know, but I'm changing my my view here. So now you're oh, okay. in the main screen. So LC7, Lance, yeah. how are you today? I'm good, man. I'm slightly sunburnt because it's been really hot here, and I've just been out playing soccer, like a proper soccer match, and the sun was so hot. I didn't realize I was going to come out all red, and I'm literally sunburnt. And I'm like, oh, what's going? April, man, I can't believe it. But I'm good. Besides that, I'm really good. I'm good. I I'm don't good. understand it. How can you be sunburned? I thought it was always cloudy and rainy. No, no, <laughs> no. no. That's just the movies. All right. That's just what they tell you in the movies, and and it's all everything's little little cottages, and it's quaint, and it's cute. No, 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 no. Oh. It, England's a great place, or Britain, whatever. Great Britain. Nice. Yeah, Are the beaches cold though? Um. They'd be cold now, but by sort of May, June, July, they'll be warm. They'll be warming up. So there's oh, a lot okay. of surf because it's an island, and we're right on the Atlantic. So there's big, there's big waves. All right, because this is what happens here, man. I'm from Mexico, yeah. and um, well, the beaches in Mexico are amazing, but every time I come here, I realize the beaches here are so cold. Really? Oh, because yeah. the water comes down from the north, doesn't it? Yeah comes down for like the pacific all the way down man. so all cold. the surfers every time here at the beach they always have the wetsuits yeah. right and that doesn't ex i mean i guess people wear them everywhere but in mexico normally the water's way warmer <laughs> betho, betho trust me man i have to wear gloves i have to wear hoods i have to wear booties i have to wear a full suit i have to wear a 5.5 millimeter suit because it's cold it's cold <laughs> <laughs> that's fun that's fun so you're a surfer right among other yeah, things, it, I, I, yeah, I, I love I love surfing. We go surfing every year for family holiday, All right. and um, I've got a VW surf bug, so I love it. It's good. good Ooh, fun. wow! Got a, got a right. Yeah. Hey, let good. me tell you one story about um, about buses, because here, I mean, those uh, Volkswagen buses are pretty yeah. you know, pretty epic for surfers. So one day, I'm yeah. driving by, and my cut my uh, brother in law sees one. And he's like, hey, check that out. It's so cool. Can you? And, and it had a sign for sale. So I call. He's like, call it so we can know how much it is. And I didn't know the culture. So I call. And I'm like, hey, how much for the van? He's like, it's not a van. It's a bus. I'm like, no, 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 no. The van, the van that's parked there. <laughs> it's a big van, you know, like a Volkswagen. It's, it's a bus. I'm like, <laughs> okay, how much for that? It's like 10 grand or whatever. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. No. <laughs> Never you mind. Was, you fell at the first hurdle. Yeah. So anyways, there's a whole culture to surfing and buses yeah. and whatnot. I, I think that's international. That's here as well. They wow. call it a VW bus. <laughs> so I've got a, a 2009 VW. And I'm, slowly, I'm slowly doing it up and making it all like inside carpeted and insulated and Nice. Good to go. It's really good fun. Uh, that's cool. Yeah, in Mexico, we're pretty. Was a pretty big deal, but with the bugs, remember, yeah. like the the rounded yeah, cars. Yeah. Those are pretty yeah. big deal in Mexico, even though they're not produced anymore. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, people do all kinds of crazy things with those. Lance, uh, so good to have you on the show. Well, and it's good to be here. 
I was listening to LC7 for for a few weeks now. I'm I'm new to LC7. I'm a little bit new. No, hate to say this, but I'm a little bit new to EDM. Uh, yeah. And it's like, man, it's good music. I love oh. it. So, but here's the thing. I mean, why EDM in a in a country where it's known for like Coldplay and the Beatles and I guess maybe the Spice Girls, right? But how yeah. do you find yourself in in this type of music? Yeah, yeah. So so EDM, house music, dance music, a lot of it originated in the night nightclubs in London and Manchester. And house music, um, there's a there's a there's a heritage over in Chicago where you know Chicago house was kicked off and and then that literally moved to manchester as well which is where i live now so dance music has been at the the kind of like forefront of of all of our stuff of our culture as well so our festivals dance festivals the 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 i guess the guys that you see like the beatles and coldplay and u2 and all those uh, those kind of guys they're not edm but the you know some of the biggest djs in the world are, are british djs mm. calvin harris you know for one And um, it's just got a real scene to it. Like there's a lot of people that are into it and it's really uplifting. So it's a really good way of kind of using the music as a euphoric sort of worship. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's like yeah. another way. It's another way of worshiping Jesus. And at the same time, like I'm a, I'm a, I'm an out and out evangelist. Like I, my, our mission statement in the band is to take the life changing message of Jesus to young people through music. So if I go into a school and where we do lots of high school tours and um and i play matt redman or chris tomlin it it would <laughs> but if i put on edm everyone's like what what this is hang on you're a church boy what what's this and so we've we've kind of gone into lots of different genres so we go into a bit of trap a little bit of hip-hop but you know the the whole kind of thing is like party music it's anything you can party to anything you can let that wants to you you want to get up and dance and use your body to to move about is is our kind of vibe and it it builds a platform to tell millions of people about jesus wow that's so cool man i love that approach and uh well congrats on what you're doing and these songs they're amazing um and you mentioned the word church boy and that's actually one of your songs too and how yeah. did you end up first of all i mean what's kind of like your journey uh knowing christ or or even calling yourself a church boy even to the point where yeah, now yeah. you're you're utilizing this music as a tool of evangelism like what's yeah yeah how did you get there i grew up i grew up my parents my parents were christians and um so i grew up with a with a <clears throat> kind of understanding you know they'd go to church and i'd go to church with them um um and i got to a point where i must have been 15 16 and i kind of switched off and i think i think that happens to a lot of kids they kind of you either go two foot into the church and into it And I was just really, really into sport, basketball, soccer, um, and, and all kinds of stuff. And, and I just, I just put all my energy into that. And, and it, and it kind of the lifestyle that comes with the sort of jock sporty lifestyle just was, was at the time more attractive than, than the church lifestyle. And, um, and I was, <clears throat> I was hanging out with all the guys I was playing for, um, you know, I was 15 playing for an under 19 team. So everyone was big. I was tall, but they were bigger. And we'd all go out afterwards and I was the kid, but I just, I, I got a taste of that lifestyle and it kind of started a bit of a slippery slope. Um, and uh, I was at university and I, you know, I went to university in America. I went to, to Illinois State University wow. um, to learn, to learn basketball, to play, to, to, um, to do sports science, which was, which was my degree. But I always loved music. So I had these two loves, music and sport. Wow. I think they go hand in hand. And if, you know, I, I was always going to, to nightclubs, Uh, in, in the UK, like the biggest nightclubs, you know, 10,000 seat nightclubs and and absolutely love dancing. And what what the music would do to me is like that euphoric. Whoa, yeah, like 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 worship, but just in a different sense. And and I got to a point where, you know, I, like I said, my parents were Christians. My parents were um, they were on the Billy Graham team in, wow. in Europe. So they were like full on. They understand. They understood evangelism. They understood everything that was going on. And um, and I came back from a, a big um, boys holiday vacation in, uh, how do you say it? We say Ibiza. Do you say Ibiza? Ibiza? You know, Ibiza. What's Ibiza, that? The pop do you not know where that is? That's crazy. No way. So Ibiza is a, is a Balearic island in Spain. 
and it's the dance island capital of the world. Ah, okay. Ibiza. So have, Ibiza? Ibiza, yeah. Okay. I've so heard, have, but I mean, I have no idea. I've just heard the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you, they'd, they'd, love, they'd love you. You'd understand everything they're saying, just in a, a different Spanish accent. But um, mm. it's where every party goer, if you're thinking of spring break, so if you went to Panama City Beach or um, Daytona Beach at spring break, you know, Ibiza, the whole, the whole of the summer season is like that. So it's just clubs and massive clubs, super clubs, DJs. So I, I'd been on a holiday like that and I came back and I turned up at Christian Festival and obviously that lifestyle was over there and I walked into the Christian Festival and this band started to play that were based in Manchester that played similar stuff to what I'd been hearing. So I was like, what? This doesn't make sense. So I, I stood at the back and listened to the music and the guy at the front stopped, they stopped the music and preached the gospel And I was on my knees down the front, giving my life back to Jesus because wow. I've been living this way. And it, the music did to me exactly what, what I do with young people now. So I was kind of born again into being, a, 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 I call it a musicianary, like a, mus a musician that is an evangelist. And yeah. I, I was the first, it, it happened to me first. So I know firsthand what it feels like. <laughs> so LZ7 is birthed out of that, that response into, you know, we're seeing, 90 plus percent responses at our shows we'll, do, we'll preach the gospel and 90 percent of the audience will respond and put their hand up and say i want to know jesus and these are kids that do not know jesus you know in england it's it's very different to the to the states we don't have it's just very very different you don't have it in school it's very it's it's, it's not been handed down so it's not that kids don't want to know jesus they just don't know him so they think it's some kind of you know mystical character that happens at easter and christmas but we're in this opportunity now where we can use the music as a platform to reach them And it came out of me responding to a similar thing back in the day when I became a Christian. Wow, man. Lynn's <laughs> great story. Great story. Uh, even the connection, you know, with your parents being a part of the, like the Billy Graham yeah. in, in yeah. Europe. That's crazy. And here in America, you know, some of the, the ideas that I've been hearing a lot lately, it's like, you know, the, for example, this word deconstruction and you know, kids are turning away from the faith or things like that. And I mean, needless to say, this is America, right? So if it's happening here, they're saying some people I've talked to, even pastors from England are saying, hey, that happened 20 years ago here yeah. in England. You know, I mean, so it, it's kind of interesting, the relationship between what you're doing and the situation of England being a place where it was kind of like known as the, like the epitome of Christianity in a sense. Right. I mean, massive well, revival movements came from there. Um, and here in America too, but at the yeah. same time, I feel like not all hope is ever lost. And, you know, I want to talk about a little bit about what hope means. And I know you have a song called only hope. And I know it's kind of a little bit related to like the whole COVID pandemic. Um, yeah. What can you tell the audience that how have you experienced hope or what is hope for those who have experienced, you know, hardship or struggle or have faced the pandemic in a way that's that's oh, yeah. real? You know, I don't know if maybe emotionally with family, with disease. Um, what is hope? Um, is this is this is this being filmed as a podcast or is it just vocal? It's been filmed. Oh yeah, great. Okay, so I, I, in um, in lockdown, I started a a, a, a lads group, a, a, a blokes. How do you say it? A men's group, and we'd meet every Saturday and we'd just hang out and chat and pray and talk with each other and just from all over the country, all over the UK, all over the world. In fact, people in Nashville would dial in, and one of our one of our boys um, in lockdown developed a serious stomach cancer. And so he's, he's just gone in now to have it all cut out and he's clear, he's clear of cancer, but he's, a, he's a, he's a real fighter, but he's a chaplain in a school and he has to do sign language. So he signs for deaf kids. And he said, hope is this. He said, hope is an intrinsic feeling here. And in sign language, it's, de it's described like that. Wow. Hope wow. is a fist that comes forward like this. And he said, it's an intrinsic feeling that something good is going to happen around the corner. Now, I, I was I was watching him do it and I was like but when you couple hope with faith like you become a you be, you've got like a double combo you become like a game changer like if faith comes from here mm -hmm. hope is something good that's going to happen around the corner but faith in the bible is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you do not see 
So when you couple hope and faith, that becomes unstoppable. Like that becomes something you hold on to faith because there's so much more to live for. There's a future, there's a destiny, there's heaven, there's life to the max here on earth. But it's coupled with this word hope and something good's going to happen around the corner. So the two become, you become powerful. You become a history maker, a game changer, someone that can leave a legacy and a wake that other people follow because they want to know what this hope and this faith is. So you're right. Only hope is the podcast and hope is that word and hope has a name and his name's Jesus. But when you couple that hope with faith in Jesus and you put your faith in Jesus, that's when it changes the game. So, yes, Pete, obviously it's been the toughest moment on the planet, hasn't it? For everybody, everybody, you know, for us in a, in a, a music ministry, everything came to a halt. It just disappeared. And that word hope has meant so much to us. You know, something good is going to happen. But also I've got the faith to believe that Jesus is, is, is in control. And he's in charge and whatever's coming at us, you know, whether it's death in the family. I lost one of my best mates in lockdown as well. Um, he had a heart attack in uh, in the street, but it, uh, obviously under Corona restrictions, no one could see him wow. and, and he, he he passed away. So I wrote a cover of Amazing Grace. Um, I did a, an LZ, LZ7 cover version of it just to express the hope we have in Jesus and the Amazing Grace. And to say to young people on our live streams, when you take those two things you realize you're never alone. So whatever life throws at you, whatever the curveball, whatever the roller coaster sends you on through life, Jesus is with you in the driving seat, sat next to you. And some people, you know, a lot of kids ask me, well, then why can't he just sort it out and make it good? And I'm like, I don't really know. But what I do know is that I'd rather do it with him sat there than without him. And that's hope. That's yeah. hope. And then you couple it with faith. Wow. That's so good. So you're saying you have a podcast too called Only Hope. And you were yeah. saying like you were filming the attic, doing like live streams, and now you're moving I mean, to now. A... This is where I am in my attic. Look, yeah. look at all this. This is the insulation. <laughs> insulation. That's so cool. And you said you're moving now to a warehouse, and people are tuning in. What is that like? I mean, even even to take the opportunity of you. I mean, you had a music ministry, right? So imagine yeah. all the people that I mean, I've heard of many many musicians who are like men. Uh, this season is crazy because this is our livelihood, right? This is what we do for a living. Uh, yeah. But really to step out in, in hope and in faith that, hey, maybe this is a moment of doing things a little different, right? Even churches around exactly. the world started live streaming and doing like, you know, in front of the camera and Facebook lives, YouTube lives. What oh, yes. is that experience particularly been like for you? Um, and and how do you connect, you know, through a, yeah, through yeah. something that could seem like, Man, I'm just seeing a guy on the screen. How how can you make it deeper than yeah, that? Sure. Um, if you go to um, a website, it's it's our it's our live stream website. You can watch it. It's on demand. It's www.illuminate as in light illuminateyourcity.com forward slash live stream. So if you put that up on your in your links somewhere, Bethel, that'd be amazing. But if you go and watch it, we we we've actually there's a there's a church in Manchester that's been and bought an old Staples warehouse. So Staples Warehouse, they've blacked it out and put in 50, 60 foot LED screens. So we move these screens around and turn it into the closest thing you could get to a live show. So we put CO2 cannons in it. We put LED lasers. Um, um, the next one, I'm going to have flames and fire. It's, the only difference is there's no one in the room. So we we sit six to seven cameras that we, we work the camera. So we kind of like, you know working at it, rapping at it, singing at it. And then you bob over to the next one. And it's just creating this live show that when someone's watching it, they feel like they're in the room. Wow. That was the closest wow. thing I, did, I could do. But um, all of our high school tours are called Illuminate, which means to light. Um, our ministry name is, is Light. Our record label is called Light Music. LZ7's our first single was called This Little Light of Mine. Which, so it's all around light, shining a light in a dark world. So Illuminate Live is the live stream. Illuminate Online is a bunch of schools lessons that we've sent to all of our schools that we've worked in for them to use it. And they're signposted to the Illuminate Live. So they can all come and watch a live show as if we were in their school. So our normal weeks will be taken up with recording and writing music, uh, writing discipleship resources, but also going into high schools. And we'll do five, five schools in five days and a gig at the end to 1,500 kids or 1,000 kids and then preach the gospel and then have the local church work with us to disciple these kids 
Now, we're growing that into a big festival and Illuminate Live is like the online version of the of the festival. So all these kids are now logging on online. So you're getting emojis popping up and I'm, I'm telling people to respond with a prayer emoji or a heart mm. to say they're responding to Jesus. So there's a fly in them. So they're responding <laughs> to Jesus. And then, and then we'll, we'll, we'll flood the stream with all of our discipleship resources. One of them is called the AAA Pass. So it's www.theaapass.com. So when a kid comes to a show, we give them a literally round their neck, a AAA Pass. It says access all areas. And it's got all the instructions of how they log onto the site. And it's, and it's us guys in LZ7 taking them through their first steps of faith. So we were, we were almost already geared for it. We just had to start the events. So everything we did was online anyway, as in once we'd left the physical, physically left. So let's say we did a tour in London or Brighton. Once we'd left, we'd leave the church with all of these resources that were online. Now we needed a gateway to get to that. And that was Illuminate Live, the live streams. When I first started up here, I called it cabin fever because I was in a, I was stuck in my cabin. And I was like, <laughs> I'm just going to DJ and just sing a load of songs. And then we, we, I noticed there was a lot of traction, like people were turning up and people wanted to and share in the stream and, and then, you know, we did a Christmas one and 2,800 kids, young people turned up to watch online. And, you know, if I had 2,800 people turn up to a show, I'd be like, wow, that's amazing. So it's working, it's working, it's developed and it's it's, it's used, utilizing all of the, you know, Facebook networks and Instagram and TikTok and all that stuff to, you know, all things to all people that you might save some and inviting them to these to these events. So it's been a real journey. We've been releasing lots of music as we go. So there's content coming out, live versions of stuff and acoustic versions, as well as these Illuminate events that have just kicked off. So, I mean, I've, I've loved it and I've hated it all at the same time. I've loved <laughs> seeing kids respond. I've loved seeing people come to know Jesus, but I hate not having them in the room. Yeah. Like you don't get the energy that comes back. You know, when you're, when you're, you're, you're giving everything you got, you don't get it back. You can't even... It's like a, it's like doing fifty percent of a live show. It's really weird. But, yeah, yeah. I could imagine. Burp. I watch um one of my favorite bands here in the U.S. It's Switchfoot, and they've been Switchfoot. yeah. So they've been doing um live live streams actually every month. So I watch yeah. with my boy. My boy's uh eleven years old. So nice. we sit and watch on our couch, and I can almost. I mean, we're the guys on the other side, right? So to your point. Like I wondered, you know, if John Foreman and the guys that are in this band are are there and they can see the emojis and the response and everything. And it's almost like they cannot see us sitting on the couch being like, yeah, you know, like rocking out. But we actually do. That's the fun part that we're on the couch and my son and me like are with our arms up and we're singing. So it's a right. pretty I mean, it's pretty cool. But yeah, I would I would totally see how there's that for the artists that know themselves, like that part yeah, missing yeah. where like, ah, I still miss that connection. But no, I guess also props to you because from from those of us, right, from our end, the guys that are sitting on the couch, it's super hopeful. It's helpful. It's a great resource. Uh, in, in a sense, it, it brings community. Um, it brings yeah. us together in a time of... Uh, of uh, a lot of struggle for many people yeah, yeah, uh, to say the least yeah it's been tough it's been weird and it's been great and there are certain things that i will definitely take into the next season and there are certain things that i'll just go i'm never doing that again <laughs> <laughs> i never want to have to do that again to an empty space that's ridiculous but hey yeah it yeah. is what it is man. So hopefully one day we'll all be in the same room right <coughs> yeah oh man yeah. so good well I have two questions uh, as you were talking. Um, well, one, because you're in this ministry really to, to younger people. One of the first questions would be, uh, what, what are like the typical struggles? Or I don't know if there's anything typical to, to youth, but uh, yeah. what are some of the, like the most surprising struggles that you have encountered with uh, younger, younger people? Yeah, yeah. So when we do, when we do our, our school stuff, um, I've developed an online mental health resource called I'm Possible, and it's a play on the word impossible. So if you go to if you go to impossible.uk.com, it's a 10 step self help about mental health. But, you know, obviously, Jesus is the best mental health provider, but it's talking about self harm, suicide, depression, low mood, anxiety, eating disorders. It goes all the way through the spectrum, because what we see in school 
is, um, you know, Kit, we, we start touching on these subjects in school lessons. The music presents the whole thing, but then we'll talk about, you know, stories and testimonies in between. And kids will come up and hand blades like this to me. Wow. In school. I've only got this because I've been cutting something out. Don't worry. But <laughs> they'll hand me a blade and just say, I'm, I'm choosing not to have self-harm anymore. And I'm wow. always like, wow. And then, you know, we, we have the opportunity to get the pastoral care from the school involved so they can help them. And then we'll get suicide notes handed in saying, I'm not committing suicide this weekend. Thank you so much for telling me about life and hope in Jesus. And there's been some incredible stories. And, you know, one girl, um, this was in New Zealand. She handed in 160 pills to kill herself and two blades. And then her whole arms were just full and we led her to Jesus. And then three years later, we went back to a school and, um, We'd, we'd we'd lost contact with her but we went back into the school and, and there was this lad on the front row couldn't couldn't speak couldn't look me in the eyes his de- you know depression was killing him and i gave him a free ticket to the show and as i'm talking to him the girl she, 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 the girl had perfect blonde hair blue eyes she looks up and she says lynn's do you remember me i was like no and she said it's caitlin and i'm like who's caitlin <laughs> and i'm racking my brain and she says and I, as i walk away to get some more i'm like oh my gosh you're the girl that gave us all those pills. You used to have spiky red hair and you're, you're her. And she goes, yeah, yeah. You came in my school three years ago and saved my life. She said, I'm in, I'm in church. Da, da. And I was like, Oh, she had her arm around the boy. I said, so you're with your boyfriend now. And she said, no, nah, Linz, don't get it twisted. He's in year 10. I'm in year 13. So I'm a senior. I'm part of the pastoral care team. That's now taking the year 10s through the same stuff that I went through when I was in year 10. So she had flipped from being part of the problem to being part of change, even though, and she said, it's the first time I've worn a t-shirt because all my scars have healed up. Wow. Oh, Bethel, I literally, I bawled. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I was just, you know, such yeah. a moving moment that God would use funny lads like us who do EDM to reach the lost, the last and the least. So there's lots of stories like that that come out. Yeah, man, great, great story. And thank you for sharing. So impactful and Man, I, I want to talk about this topic. I Maybe because you're in the music industry or, you know, I think that's a good word. Um, yeah. You're somewhat familiar. But, you know, with this with this whole thing, I was talking to you about kind of like the deconstruction and um, post-Christendom, things like that. Yeah. Uh, there's this word, man, that it's kind of weird, but it's actually not one word, but it's a... Um, compound word like high profile Christians yeah. high profile yeah. Christians like first of all like what does that mean but lately I've been hearing sentences like you know another high profile Christian rejects the faith or turns away from the faith or, and things like that right I mean sons of pastors pastors themselves musicians here in the US um, mm. and I don't know if in England you know there's there's some that you might have heard of or know personally but yeah. uh, it it brings me to this this uh, kind of like crazy thought or idea. But if if those of you who are listening and you, Linz, if you watch the movie Trolls, I think yeah. it's a great movie, and it's it's kind of like related to like this, you no know, super hyper hyped up um, party kingdom. Right, with yeah. everyone's partying, like every day there's music, every day everyone's dancing, every day there's a celebration. And yeah. I was thinking about this idea that Poppy, King, I mean, Queen Poppy, who is, uh, I mean, she's like the princess of the kingdom, and everybody looks up to her because she's always so cheerful. She's always so, uh, you know, li- life giving, so positive, yeah. uh, offering hope to the others. And the thing about it is like she's a leader and when the opportunity comes, when she encounters the, you know, kind of like that losing hope, losing faith uh, moment, not mm-hmm. only, I mean, everybody else is start to turn gray, right? So like is this these characters who are like super colorful and whatnot and then yeah. they start turning like dark and it's all because if this is her leader, if this is the one like they look up to and she's turning sad, she's turning gray. I mean, what, what other hope do they have? Um, what is that? I mean, when, when you hear these stories of, of people turning away, 
what does that do to you who are I mean you're specifically I, I almost think of you like a little bit like this this um like a leadership kind of like Poppy had in her kingdom. Yeah. You have this amazing leadership and it's like, man, what if you would end up being like the guy that says, man, I don't think I have this this faith anymore or I'm having this struggle. How do yeah. you wrestle with your own struggles, with your own um, with your own moments of, of um, darkness? Yeah, yeah. I think um, <clears throat> like just the examples of, of like pastors or, or other people that have dropped off and um, have, have maybe um fallen and fallen such a hard thing to do but you know they've they've stumbled and, and something's happened and they've they've done something that's that's um that's not allowed them to to be in the job that they're doing or you know they've had to resign from their post or whatever um i i genuinely think that if you keep short accounts and uh, with with a lot of people and you make sure that you're not always the tallest guy in the room So the tallest guy in the room, you know, the biggest guy in the room, the biggest voice, the biggest um, mm. mouthpiece, the biggest, you know, you, you can't always have people around you that are just yes men. Because as soon as you do, the the whole narcissistic, I've got this, I, I'm the man, like, I'm, I'm, I'm killing this, this is this is my game, I'm, I'm killing the game. As soon as that starts coming in, it's it's almost like the pride and the narcissism and the it leaves you, from what I can tell, it would, li it would leave you... Um, prone to no accountability so you've got no one to talk to and that's a dangerous place you know I, i think i think having someone on the end of the phone that you can go hey listen bro i'm really battling with this like my lads group my men's group on a saturday they're the they're our closest friends and we can just be as honest and open as as anything but it's just that check in my spirit that they go you thought about that Linz? You, you thought about maybe not saying that or doing this or whatever and i think for for a lot of the a lot of the high high profile guys that have that have fallen and taken a stumble um wouldn't have had that in their life they wouldn't have had people that they would listen to and even if they had questioned them they would have gone Psh, who are you to tell me that when when I, i i fully believe that you know jesus on palm sunday when jesus came in on a donkey he he took the low road man yeah. and that's really yeah. hard that's really hard as a as an artist and as mm -hmm. a like i'm a i'm a, if you watch our shows betha i'm, I'm a front man So I front the thing and I'm like, Mr. Party Guy. Like, if someone isn't enjoying themselves in the room, I will make you smile by the end of this gig. You are going to have some fun. Do you know what I mean? That kind of thing. So, uh, and I can feel it creep up on me when I'm like, this is, I'm good at this. Like, this is, mm. I'm, I'm not man. Like, and I'm not saying I am, but I'm just saying I can feel it kind of like, it's, it's fleshy and it's in my system and it's kind of like, it's there. And, and I feel like, When that stuff rises up, it's a fly in a room again. When that stuff rises up, that happens when to... you're in the attic. <laughs> yeah, it does it exactly. <laughs> yeah, it happens when I'm in the attic. Um, when that stuff happens, I have to really tell myself to go and talk to someone. And I've got, you know, we've got a great team around us, and I've got some. Re we we've been doing LZ7, LZ. Sorry, in England it's LZ7. Ah. In with you it's LZ7, but we've been doing LZ7 for. Um, 10, 12 years with the same people, same friends. We're wow. just a bunch of friends that do it. So I might front it, but my tour manager is one of my closest mates who would definitely pull me up on anything that would be happening in lifestyle. And I would talk to him about everything. And I think those things are really, really important. So I'm not the biggest man in the room or the, the tallest guy that can't be accountable because I, I make all the decisions about everything. I, I, I kind of think that's where, that's where the stumbling block happens. But, um, The, the, when I definitely saw this was on um, just before COVID, we opened across 26 arenas in the UK and Europe for uh, Jason Derulo. Do you know Jason Derulo? He's like a big, he's like a big secular mainstream artist. He mm -hmm. lives in LA, and it would be like opening for Justin Bieber. All right, it was big. Like, it yeah. sold out arenas, and his show is like super sexual, super. And, you, you, you know, friends of mine here were like, why would you open for this guy? And I'm like, you watch when I put the gospel in the, in the middle of this. Watch what happens. And we got up on the stage and I did this whole spoken word about Jesus being a peacemaker and fighting for peace. And it wasn't because I thought we were particularly good, but it brought such a different spirit to the room that mm. everybody got up and gave us a standing ovation wow. at the end of our set. And we were the opening act. Yes. 
which was amazing. So, you know, people were logging on to, they were finding out about Jesus, logging on to the discipleship resources. But the big thing I noticed was backstage, um, there was a lot of stuff that as a, as a kind of Christian artist, I'd be like, um, I, I need to steer clear. I need to take two steps away from this. So I said to Nathan, the guy that, um, that I was talking about, who's, who's been um, looking, you know, tour managing and looking after us. I said, we need to be on the bus at a certain time. Everybody just out. We're going to go. So we made it a rule at a certain time every night, back on the bus, in, in eye shot of everybody so you could see where everybody was. And it was just accountability amongst friends. And, and I, I feel like that was the, the making of the tour for us. Wow. And people, people came to speak to us about why do we pray before the show? Why do you, you, you keep mentioning Jesus in this spoken word? That started to come out. And that was the, the biggest privilege to talk to people backstage about that stuff and speak into their lives. You know, Jason's team and his crew and all that stuff, as well as the front end stuff, the backstage stuff. And that's when I really noticed the, the short levels of it, short, short accounts, like being really short with it, you know, just, oh, mate, help me out here. No, I'm, quick chats, talking, praying together. That stuff has, has been a real help to us. And obviously, very, very, very faithful, prayerful wives. Mm. You can never discount that. When you've got a prayerful wife and she's there, my gosh, that changes the game for someone that's doing stuff like us or prayerful husband, whichever way around it is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, that's so good. So what I'm hearing you say, it's one, like accountability. And two, we need more low profile Christians. Yeah, <laughs> right? there you go. People Take who are... Road. Right, take the oh man, that's amazing. Even how you said, uh, no, Jesus came on a donkey, right? I mean, that's that's what people saw as like the highest moment. He's riding, I mean, on like, a donkey, right? <laughs> <laughs> wow, man, that's yeah. so cool. Uh, I mean, it's not just you, you were saying you have a team. Tell me a little bit about that collaboration because I know even some of the songs, um. Uh, our song with other artists is that collaboration with different artists that you know of yeah, or is yeah. that people in the band like yeah there's different artists that we know in the uk christian guys uh different artists from around the world as well um um i do a lot of writing in uh la and portland oregon mm. up north of the states nice. and nashville so i come over to the states a lot so i i'm really good friends with people like the newsboys and toby mac and um I do a lot of writing with a band called Family Force Five that were big maybe five, six, seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And they're into their writing and stuff. So I write a lot in, the, in America and bring it back to the UK. Um, but the team, we started in 2011. And it was two of us just talking to it. We were another ministry at the time. And we were saying, you know, music, is, is, music creates a platform to be able to speak life, to speak Jesus. So put more music out into the mainstream. Go on tour with people like Bieber and Derulo and other guys because that facilitates the gospel being preached in places that kids just wouldn't go to church. They'll go to an arena, but they wouldn't go to church. So why don't we take the Great Commission and go and make Disciples of All Nations? So that's where we started. So we started a little ministry called Light and Light Music. Now, everybody that works for Light, all of all of our money, royalties, CD sales, tours, goes into Light to pay us to do it. It's a little bit like Coldplay. Coldplay do the same thing. You know, all of their royalties go in and Chris Martin doesn't make all the money. It all goes in to keep them alive as a band. We do a similar model and and it, and it really works. Um, so we're, we're, we're all close. We work together. We have an office in the center of Manchester and a studio. Um, we... <clears throat> we have a production manager, um, <clears throat> a video editing manager, <clears throat> schools liaison worker, two of them. And then each one of those guys is actually in the band as well. Wow. So they all have double roles. <laughs> yeah. So they'll do all these things. And then we've got a label manager. He's the bassist. So all of these are doubled up because, you know, especially in COVID, we're not going to be working 99.9% of the time because there's there's you know there's time where you're just like right we've got to wait for the next live stream let's get all the music done and once it's done you know so um so we all have different roles that work I front it and shout and preach and raise money for it and if there's you know illuminate tours coming people will want to trust fund give us money for it and that stuff really works and then I've got production managers and, and tour manager and we all work full time for the same organization it's a bit very similar it's modeled on Billy Graham and his five friends that's wow. what it It, literally the organization is modeled on that wow man that's so cool i love what you guys are doing i love the 
the team that no, you have. Good. I love the even like you said how even in a in in a setting where there's a way different spirit, right? And yeah. you know what you're about, you are focused and you can bring a different type of spirit to yeah. the to the one arena, right? Yeah. So how cool is that to experience? I feel like I feel like people don't know, but they know that there's something different. I have a little bit of experience. Um, I, I was in a rock band, but in Spanish here in the yeah. uh, out of all places, right? We I decided to come to the United States to do Spanish rock. So not a good <laughs> idea. Not a good idea. <laughs> but anyways, we got to open for a few acts here in the U.S., uh, especially locally, you know, and people that would come from Latin America, like big, you know, big acts and whatnot. Yeah. Even yeah. from Spain, some came, and we'd be like the opening act, and it's it's interesting to to see that. Um, I mean, we're playing rock, and the other bands playing rock, but people after the show would come and tell us, "Hey, there's something different about there you, you go. guys." There you go. That's it. That's it. Right. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. And you, you know, you're mixing with promoters and tour managers and and ma and managers and music directors, and you know the influence that you have just to say one word. You know, when you go, yo, bro, that was amazing, bro. Hey, you know what I see on you? I can see so you shine every time you play that guitar. And these guys are going, no one's ever spoken to me like that before. Yeah. Like everyone just smokes weed and 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 sleeps with groupies here. What what what's going on? And and then you get to share your faith. At one point, we walked past um Derulo's bus and um the band was sat. It's a true story and They were all sat in, in the in the, the front of the bus, not the front, the bay of the bus. And I walked past and I heard some music and I was like, what? So I went back and I put my put my head in the door and they all sat there just like chilling. And I was like, hang on a minute. You're playing Hillsong, Oceans. Wow. You're playing Hillsongs, Oceans. Why are you playing that? So that's my world. And they're like, oh, bro, this is our reset button. Wow. When everything goes pear-shaped, we put on some Christian worship. And we and we reset with oceans and i was like so anyway <laughs> that opened the floodgates of all of the christian stuff and we ended up holding hands praying together at 2 a.m in the morning praying for the families praying for the daughters the kids and just you know just that 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 opportunity was was priceless alone ah uh, so good man i love i love it um sometimes it's a, you said in one of your songs sometimes you need the dark Just, just to, to see, see the, the light, light, right? That was my picture of England. I always thought, man, England is sad, but <laughs> no, right? What? <laughs> yeah, well then, well then, obviously Jesus is smiling on us because it's always dark, so then the light has to pierce yeah, through. Yeah, it's it's obvious. Ah, uh, to comment, <laughs> what is this? Is totally unrelated, but I just I just kept thinking Manchester. What's your uh, what's your team, man? No, I'm so I'm originally from down south. I'm originally from near London. So I'm an Arsenal fan, which is a London team. Um, but my son is born is born here and he's a Manchester United. So ah. I kind of <laughs> I kind of have to follow United because he does. Well, that's but funny. I'm a, I, yeah, I'm an Arsenal fan. But I play football, I play a lot of soccer. Yeah? Um yeah, cool. well, I've just come back. That's why that's why I'm so sweaty. But um yeah. when I when I came to America to live for university, I played soccer with with um In a in a Hispanic league, oh because, wow! And this this is like maybe 15 years ago, but it was yeah. because the um, the Hispanic leagues were, were so much better, yeah. and they, they they could actually play football. <laughs> <laughs> so I went and played with the, with loads of Mexicans and Colombians, and it was wicked. It was really good. Yeah, oh, <laughs> different, man. different style of football, but good. I love it, man. I'll tell you one of my first experiences um, doing an interview. This is funny because. Well, anyway, it's a long story, but it was my first ever interview with a high-profile Christian, right? <laughs> but <laughs> low-profile, whatever. A musician who was a Christian. And it was uh, Martin Smith from Delirious. Oh, he's a really good friend of mine. Really? Yeah, so, he's a really good friend of mine. Oh, man, so good. So it was one of my first interviews back in the days. This is like, again, like 15 years ago, like you said. I was so shy... I was nervous and I was like, because right, you know? right. I mean, he just came from playing at like a big arena and yeah. I had my one tiny little camera and I'm, I mean, it was a legit um, uh, show because I was sending it to um, a show from Mexico, but then they broadcasted it around the world through a, 
Hispanic wow. TV network. But I remember just asking almost like silly questions. And that's, that's why I feel like a little bit of me is like, man, I'm, I feel like I'm a little weird when I interview people. Cause I, I, <laughs> no, you're great, man. I, I you're can really go, good. I can go from, uh, I don't know, something super serious to, hey, man, what's your, your favorite <laughs> soccer yeah. team? But yeah, same just... same question I asked him, and I remember, you no, know, even to this day, it's like, I'm a man United. You know, it's like, man yeah, United. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's yeah. actually, I think he might be a Brighton fan now because he moved to Brighton. Oh, wow. So I see I see him at Brighton games, and they're, they're in the Premier League. Nice. So um, so I, I I see him. But yeah, he's he's such a good guy. He's a nice bloke, man. Uh, we, we got on really well, and him and his wife have been a real support to us. Because wow. we um we, we adopted two kids, our our family, so we call it a mosaic. Nice. So it's a, you know it's, it's broken parts, but beautiful that make a beautiful picture. Yeah. And um and these two they're they're mixed race, so they're mixed Jamaican English. Wow. <laughs> I call I call them Jim English. <laughs> oh, Jim English. <laughs> Jim English. They so they've got my my little boy Jack. He's got kind of red, not Afro hair, but curly, and Carmelo skin. He's just a beautiful lad. Um, and my daughter has got blonde Afro hair, but with lighter skin. Um, and uh, and that's what, um, sometimes you need the dark just to see the light. That's about her life. Mm. So when you said that lyric, that's about my little Willow's life, um, about how dark it was at the beginning, but she saw the light and, and you got, got had a promise for her life. And it was always plan A, it's never plan B. Whether you're adopted, whether you're homegrown, we call them homegrown or chosen. So whether you're mm. chosen or you're homegrown, it was always plan A for your life that you would be with your family right now, adopted into it and adopted into God's family as well. So that's what we kind of talk about as a family. So yeah, anyway. So you just, have yeah. two kids? Yeah. Awesome. Man, One, I have three. Two, I have three kids. So wow. it's it's amazing. It's a whole different world. And I, I, found, I find myself sleeping more. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? Like, How? <laughs> I get to like 1 p.m. and the two, one of them is two. She'll go down for a little sleep, and I find myself in the corner just going, oh, "I'm just gonna have a little. I'm just gonna have a little sleep." So I just have a little sleep for five <laughs> minutes and wake up. Brilliant! I've learned it in lockdown. That's one thing I will take out of lockdown into normal life. Wow! No, I haven't slept well ever since, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's job. been like twelve years. It's it's gone. <laughs> oh, it's a whole dude, different sorry, world. Man, man yeah. I love I love um. Just your heart, your this conversation I think has been so helpful and life given, and <clears throat> this yeah. is where I want to go with my two last questions. Go for um, it. You have a song called "Giant Killer," and I think it it talks a little bit about family. And what do you think? I want you <coughs> to send a message for a generation of the future. So think of yeah. your kids. Think of my kids. Yeah. Um, Send a message right now, 50 years into the future. Yeah, yeah. What yeah, would yeah. you want to say today that you think it's going to resonate the same with people in 50 years from now? Yeah, yeah, totally. So, um, so Giant Killer um, is written about my son Jack, and it's called Jack the Giant Killer. Um, and he, when he was when he when he first came to us, he was uh, 10 months old. And someone pulled him out of church and said, um, I can see that you, Jack, you're a giant killer. Like you're going to kill the giants of depression and oppression and anxiety and worry in people. You're going to kill them just by you carrying Jesus into those situations. So the reason Jack can be a giant killer and carry Jesus into those situations is because Jesus never changes. So 50 years from now, when the Bible says I'm the same today, yesterday and forever, They're talking about the same Jesus never changes. Whatever circumstances people are going through, whatever's happened to them, whatever's been said about them, whatever's been done to them, Jesus remains the same. And Jesus, the, the hope you find in Jesus is constant. The faith you find in Jesus is constant. That doesn't change. So if we're looking at, um, you know, 50 years time and there's young people who are battling with, with all kinds of new gadgets and social media stuff that we've never even experienced, Jesus never changes. Now, it doesn't mean he doesn't, he, he, he's out of date. No, that's not what I'm saying. What it means is that the constant message of the cross, the constant message of what happened 2,000 years ago when he died and rose again, the constant message of he, he beat death and rose again, the constant message is that he left the Holy Spirit here on earth with us, the constant message, that's all constant. So he's the same. 
doesn't doesn't change. So when I'm talking to Jack, I might be happy one day and angry the next day because he's done something or I don't know, something's going wrong. Not angry, but you know what I mean? Like in a different mood. I'm changeable. I do this and and Lucy, my wife, does this, but Jesus just does doesn't change. It's this. And what doesn't change is his consistent love, his consistent grace, and his consistent forgiveness for everything. Loves you because he designed you, made you inside out, absolutely perfect. No one's ever had your fingerprints. No one has your fingerprints. No one ever will have your fingerprints because you are customised one-off designs. That's how much he loved you. It's constant because when he died on the cross, he died for all the, all the sin that you've done, all the set st stuff you've said, all the stuff that's happened in the past. That doesn't change. That's what he died for. But he also allows you to walk into freedom because when he beat death and he came back, he was like, I did it. I came back. I, I beat it like the devil thought he'd won, but I stole the keys from hell and came back. And because of that, we now walk into freedom every single day because he is the same yesterday, today and forever. But it also says his mercy, that means his forgiveness is new every morning. So every morning you wake up and you've messed it up the day before, there's still grace for that and there's still forgiveness for it because it doesn't change. It's consistent. So good, man. Preach it, man. Preach it. <laughs> 50 years into the future. If you are watching this 50 years from now, that would be 2071. Imagine. Yeah. I don't know if I'll be alive, but it'd be so awesome if you send us a message and send uh, us your comments. And say, I heard this. I heard this. <laughs> somebody somebody send us a message will i don't know it's gonna be fun <laughs> fun uh yeah all right man and legends this is where i want to end yeah loved i mean all your songs like i was saying they're just so upbeat they're so hopeful and helpful yep. and one of them that i loved among many songs that you have is legends and in the song you said we'll be legends walking no we'll be walking with legends on golden streets and yeah. i think i mean for sure this is uh no it's talking about heaven right we'll be there we'll be walking on, yeah. on golden streets but yeah. i love this idea of legends because even with with my show i'm trying to create almost like a club where you want to subscribe and you'll be the legend and the yeah. idea of it is that y you don't really know that you're a legend until time and history says that you became a legend, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's the daily habits, the daily things, almost like the details that you do on your regular day-to-day -day life that yeah. will make that happen. So if we want to walk in a way that we become legends, we should yeah. start now, right? Yeah. What does yeah. it mean for you to, to, to say yeah. we'll be walking with legends? So when we wrote the song, I was picturing my children turning up to heaven's gates and mm. the legends of the faith beckoning them in saying, come, come, come and have a look at this. And Nelson Mandela and Martin Luther King would be there holding their hands. Wow. And um, Moses would be over the other side going, what's up, Jack? Come, my, my boy's called Jack. Jack, come, let me show you. Let me show you the golden streets. Um, and I heard this, I heard this quote. So that's the walking with legends bit is the, it's the heaven. It's, you know, it's, it's when we get there. It's the heaven part. Um, but the um, I heard this quote from a famous um, wartime prime minister from the UK. He was around at the same time as Roosevelt was in the US. He's called Winston Churchill. And he said, insanity is doing the same thing, expecting different results. So insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. And I, and I, and I, I read that and I was like, I need to really get that. Insanity is doing the same thing, expecting different results. So that means if I carry on with my language, the way that I'm speaking, nothing's going to change, of course, but I'm expecting different results, even though I'm carrying, even though there's no change, there's no like line of change. There's no difference between those two. And, and I just thought legends, the, the legendary guys, they had this moment where They were like, nothing's going to be the same again. And that could have been the time they met Jesus. That could have been the time someone spoke to them, spoke a word over them, spoke life over them. But there must have been a moment where it suddenly went and it clicked and it went in a different direction. As in the insanity stopped and they started doing things differently. 
and the world tells us to live this certain way you know go out and party and get drunk and stick with girls and and um, live that lifestyle but nothing changes that only leads to one place and that one place is the place that you don't want to be without God but that click in the change in direction that 180 degree turn when you turn back to Jesus that's when you start becoming a legend coupling that hope and faith becoming a game changer that's that's the sentiment of the song really um, and you know once you do that you will be walking with legends when we get to heaven awesome Lance <laughs> This has been amazing. Thank you so much for Absolutely. for being on the show. Now Legends is playing underneath as we speak. Go check out LC7. You got you I mean you're on Spotify, you're everywhere. Is there a, a specific place besides like all the links that you already gave me where you want to point people to? Yeah, I mean come come join us on the live stream. I would love. I mean there's a few guys from LA that jump on. So go to it, um illuminateyourcity.com forward slash live stream i'd love to see you guys there come and meet us in the chat go find us on instagram our dms are open you can ask us questions we answer them as much as we can and and um you know there's there's it's a safe place to kind of like just be honest about stuff and then come and join us on instagram come find us follow us get involved in the journey and then maybe share some of the discipleship resources with people that you know need to know jesus it's the easiest thing i can say love it lynn's in Manchester, you, England. Woo!